Ms. Gabbard is recognized. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the debate on this issue has gone on for a long time, uh, and much has happened within the last year. So much of what's been said here tonight uh, I think is true. I think that there have been changes made. There will continue to be changes made. Uh, but the voice that I don't hear very often, people talk about commanders and the chain of command and good order and discipline, all of which I believe strongly in. I've served as a, an enlisted private. I've served as a platoon leader and a company commander and, and believe in the institution that we have that makes our military strong. But through this whole conversation about this epidemic of sexual assault in the military, uh, the voice that is not often heard enough is the voices of those service members who have been through this, those who, when you speak to them one-on-one, -on -one, they tell you that the number one change that will make a difference, it won't solve this complicated issue, but it will make a difference, is taking this decision-making authority outside of the chain of command. I had a chance to meet with a couple of uh, survivors about a month ago and heard some of the incredible, incredibly horrible uh, experiences that they have gone through. Uh, evidence is often brought up saying, well, there's not enough evidence. I heard a story from this female sergeant who had gone to a new unit, was working with a fellow soldier who continuously, uh, inappropriately and indecently exposed himself to her over and over and over again. She reported it to her command. They said, oh no, he would never do that. So the next time he did it, she snuck and took pictures with her phone. She went back and said, look, here's my proof. They said, oh great, thanks. Give us the, uh, the memory card so that we can actually do something about this. Within the next few days, somehow mysteriously that memory card disappeared. There was no other evidence there. There are so many different stories and anecdotes on both sides of this issue, but I think it is crucial that we also put on equal footing the stories of those who have been victims, those stories of those survivors who are driving on, who are seeking to empower others who have felt completely powerless, not only from this horrific experience, but from what they've had to go through beyond that, whether they've gone through the military justice system or not. Uh, and this is why I feel so strongly that with the issue of sexual assault and understanding and living and appreciating the culture that exists in the military, having that fair, transparent system of a military prosecutor uh, takes away much of the influence that's there, much that intimidates those who are victims from coming forward. This will not solve the entire problem. This is not the silver bullet. There is not one that exists. I don't believe that but this will create a significant change to this problem that we have faced for decades. My concern is that when Congress shifts its attention to another issue, will we have a system that is in place that will hold people accountable and that will maintain this fair, transparent, and independent system that will bring about justice? I yield back.